about 24 bucks. It's the cost of a modest takeout order. It's also what states receive per person in grant money from the Center for Disease Control's programs last year. That's according to Trust for America's Health. But if you were in Canada, you'd get more than an entree. It spends about $7,000 per person via public health funding. And that's like 300 chicken pad thais. While the CDC's overall budget increased in fiscal year 2019 and 2020, its core budget has been essentially flat for the last decade. On Capitol Hill, that's led to exchanges like this. The CDC budget is $11 billion, 1.5% of our defense budget. Dr. Redfield, do you think our country would have been safer if, let's say, we had twice the CDC budget? For, you know, decades, we've underinvested in the public health infrastructure of this nation. This year, the greatest threat to American safety has been the public health crisis known as COVID-19, killing more Americans than every war since the Korean War combined. So we wanted to know, how many lives could be saved and what would the impact be if our nation's budget treated public health like national security? The defense budget is $738 billion. This past year, the Trump administration budgeted for 79 F-35s and the cost of one is $144 million. The Cato Institute says that's the same as 2,800 ventilators. The White House also asked for $3.5 billion for two Arleigh Burke destroyers for the Navy. One destroyer equals nearly 15,000 hospital beds. The budget also made room for modernizing 89 M1 Abrams tanks for $1.5 billion. For the record, the Army didn't even want this. The cost of one tank could buy 17 million N95 masks. So what would this public health as national defense mentality do for our virus-fighting firepower? We asked Dr. Anthony Fauci. Hello. Hello, Dr. Fauci. How are you today? I'm well, thank you. How are you? Is there room in this country to develop a more robust biological defense system? Why or why not? Yeah, I mean, we have a program that we started uh, some time ago and was fortified by the threat of a pandemic flu, when we had the bird flu, that jump species, killed people. Luckily for us, it never developed an efficient capability of going from person to person. But it was a threat and it triggered what's called pandemic preparedness program, which is just what you're referring to. Just as you would put money into a Department of Defense, we put money into developing the infrastructure the stockpiles, the preparedness, the platforms for vaccine. We are at war right now, and we need to be able to make these really significant year in and year out investments. It's Dara Lieberman's job to lead public health advocacy strategy with Congress and the White House, a tough task in 2020. How do you respond um, when someone proposes, what if we prioritized public health funding like national security? Well, we truly believe that health security is our national security, and we are seeing um, that this pandemic had as significant an impact on our economy and on our lives, on our mental health and our physical well-being as any war, any terrorist attack. And while public health isn't expecting a Pentagon-sized budget anytime soon, Lieberman wants to see less reactive spending and a more proactive approach to bolstering the infrastructure. Now, What's looming very large in, in public health mind is the, um, the optimism of a vaccine. So we are spending billions and billions of dollars on um, developing several candidates for a COVID-19 vaccine, but we have not spent any money on uh, the actual distribution. The Association of State and Territorial Health Officials estimate vaccine distribution to cost $8.4 billion. The organization says that money is urgently needed to strengthen federal, state, and local health departments. We're holding our health department together with DOS and duct tape. And it's so inadequate. You wouldn't accept this from a local hospital. So why is it acceptable for a local health department to function this way? Jeanette Kowalik has seen what could go wrong when a pandemic hits as the former commissioner of health for the city of Milwaukee at the outbreak of COVID-19. We knew that we were understaffed. We knew that our systems were antiquated. I mean, we didn't even have an electronic health record. 
The other thing is looking at other uh, types of support services and health departments, such as a communications department. We literally had one person. If you invest in public health um, the way that you should invest in it, then you're not going to spend as much money down the road. And then there's a, the option or the opportunity to have a better quality of life because you address things before they get out of hand. A notion the nation's top infectious disease doctor agrees with. When this is over, and it will be over, we won't forget the threat that we faced and will continue to put significant resources into preparedness for the next outbreak, which inevitably will occur. So I think you made an appropriate analogy, just as you would want to build up a defense against physical threats. We have to have a defense against biological threats.